Happy day students, class 6, this is your December portions, chapter 8, control statement. Okay, so now let's have a look on what is control statement. Basically, control statements means particularly will be given a condition. If that particular condition is satisfied, then a set of condition, uh, set of statements will be executed. Okay, so that that particular point, that test condition decides to which the order of the execution is decided by that particular condition and we call it as a control statement so in q basics they are providing you if then go to if then else these many condition condition statements so now let's have to see what is go to statement the first condition statement over here you can see line number 10 a is equal to 1 20 b is equal to a into a print b so value of b is printed over here then a is equal to a plus 1 so value of a is incremented by, by 1 then go to 20 so again it goes to the line number 20 the same conditions keep repeating. This is will be an endless loop, infinite loop it will be because every time it reaches line number 50, it goes to 20. Again it reaches line number 50, again it goes. There is no end. The program does not halt over here. Only if it goes to line number 60, the program can halt. But every time it comes over here, line number 50, it again uh, control goes back to 20. So this is one of the example of go to statement and this particular one is an infinite loop. Yes, they are given some current real-time example where tickets, tickets are available then see the movie if tickets are not available then you have taken another option that you're going for a food in a restaurant the next condition is if then statement so this syntax is very important if a particular condition is satisfied then the statement has to be printed if you are getting movie tickets then you're going for movie if you are if else what i will happen that will be another so here, over here we are only focusing on if this particular satis condition is satisfied then this condition statement has to be executed. So let's take an example over here. If x is greater than y, if this condition is whatever the value of x and y given by the user, depending if this condition is true alone, then the value of c will be incremented by 1. So they are given stated few examples over here. Given a simple program, they are given REM. As I said, is a remark about the program. So this program is to find the greater number. CLS clears the screen. So this part will be known as how you write the algorithm that i'll teach you first let's have a look over here then input input means you're reading the value you are reading going to read two numbers that is n1 and n2 then they are going to check if the first number is greater than the second number then greater number is n1 yes or no we are saying n1 is greater than n2 if not we are having next condition is this is the condition that is coming to then n2 will be the greater if both the conditions are not satisfied which means it can be equal to right if n1 is equal to n2 then they are equal and the line when it comes to end which means program gets halt you definitely have to write a line number in front of it so you can see the first we are going to write the steps first step is we are clearing the screen then we are reading two numbers that is input two numbers then n1 is n greater than first condition has been checked then the second condition has been checked when they both, they both are same it has been checked then the program's end of the program has been seen so you are writing the steps, this is this particular step 1, step 2 is known as the algorithm of the program. If you are able to write the algorithm means you understand the program logically, then we just need to put it into the programming language which you are using, which over here we are teaching you Q basics. Okay, they are given you now some value, what will be the result of A is equal to, it is in string, string values when added, what will be the output. Then next program is to find the difference of two numbers depending on user's choice. Okay. Give me a minute. Let's switch on to the video. So we are on the chapter control statements. As I told you, if a particular condition is true, then a set of statements is executed. If that statement is false, then another statement is executed. So flow of control decided by the control statement. Then we are going through the example of go to statement. Wherein I told you, see every time it reaches a line number 50, Again, the same, it goes to line number 20. So, in this program, never comes to a halt. We call it as an infinite loop. Then, we are seeing the example of ticket. So, what will be the result? I have asked you. Then, we are seeing one of the if then statement condition wherein um, they are given few statements. Like these many statements were given x is greater than y. Then, we had to add if this particular condition. Then, you are going to input the value of this particular condition satisfied. Then, you are printing going to print C. If this particular condition is then you are going to line number 80. So these were the sum of the if then as statements you are seeing. Then we are written a simple C programming wherein we wrote the program as well as this algorithm.
Next program we were about to say is difference between two numbers. So first you will clear the screen, then you will input two numbers. Then we are going to, if you opt, the user is giving one, then addition should be performed. If so user is giving two, then subtraction should be performed with the variables that has been entered. So if ch is equal to one, which means the user's choice is being stored with the variable ch. If ch value is equal to one, then the result will be stored in c. That will be the added value will be stored in c. Yes, if ch value is equal to two, then the first and second value will be sub the value will be subtracted from the first, and then the result will be stored in c. After which we'll be printing the c. So c will have the value according to the uh, whether the choice of user in the ch is one or two. And then again it says whether you want to exit. If you want to exit, you have to type y in caps. If you don't want to exit or repeat the same process again and again, you can give in which means denotes no. Yes, so if the user prints n, what have you have to go to the first line. So you have to go to the line number 20 and the process is repeated. If in case he's given y, then you have to come to the line which has the word end. So use of line numbers. So line number I have to do when you have to give both to also respective of that every syntax you have to write a line number. Then if then else statement. If then if this particular condition is satisfied, then you print the statement. Else you print the other statement. So if one if I'm saying if you get the tickets, you can watch the movie, else you can go to the restaurant. So if true statements are specified, then um, after the then is executed. But if it's a false condition, whatever comes after the else statement gets executed. Over here, we are going to see if n is greater than 100. Sorry, n is less than 100. So if this particular condition, I will let my value be n is equal to 3. Then it will go to line number 30. But if my n's value was 105, because it's greater than 100, right? So it will go to line number 60 in this program. So they are given explanation of if assign the value of 1 to n, then we are giving the value 100. If it is within this shift, it will go to line number 30 and print the value of n. Otherwise, it will go to line number 60. And increment by value to increment mean add if a person values 9 and then increment by 2 means you will add 9 plus 2. And if the earlier value of over here we are given n's value is 1. In that case, 1 plus 2 will give the value 3. So, we will check the condition. So, have a look. Clear screen to clear the screen. Then input, we are putting double quotes. So, whatever you put in double quotes, the message will be enter your name and age. It will wait for you to enter your name and the age dollar sign because it's a string variable. Age is an integer variable. So, dot dollar sign. Then if the age, whatever you entered, if it's, if it's Less than 80, then go to 12, line number 40. So, let's see what is line number 40. It may be saying, high, you whatever you will have to enter, high, name dollar. You are, whether you are eligible for something, they will, you are not an adult. Yes, less than 18 means you are not an adult. If the case was like this particular value is more than 18, let's say 20. Then we should go to line number 60. Go to 60. Else condition they are given line number 60. So let's see what line number 60 says. Hi, you are an adult. Okay. So if it was 17, which is less than 18, it comes over here. It prints you are not an adult. Go to 70. So what is line number 70? The program gets halt over there. It's end statement. So that it comes a halt over there. Yeah, so the explanation of the program is given. First, we are going to clear the screen. Then the value input name and age is given. A. Name being a string, you will use a dollar sign over there. And age being integer, you can give the variable name as age itself. Then, according to the value of age, the message will be printed. If it is less than 18, then it will bring you not an adult. And it goes to line number 70. That is, states you to end the program. And if otherwise the condition is greater than 18, then you say it's your elderly person and your old person. And it will be halting the program. Yes. With this, whatever topics had been discussed in this chapter gets over. So you can see one into hundred. They give an adult program that you explained just now. So they are given the explanation also over here. With this, this particular chapter gets over. Now let's see what are the lab activities.
so first lab activity the same what you're asked done textbook add subtract they don't told you add and subtract now we added multiply and divide also so depending on your v of ch value the uh, the they will execute but like you'll perform the action like a is equal to if the value was one then c is equal to a plus b if the value is four then will be divided and accordingly the value of c will be printed and it will ask whether you want to continue or exit if you say y it will go accordingly if you say no then again it will go to line number 20 and ask you again two numbers yes so here you can see given two numbers then we are choices one that is addition will happen then you are asked whether you want to exit you are saying yes then you comes and comes out of the program now the program is to sum of first 10 numbers so first you will have to initialize c is equal to whenever you write a program just have a pencil in your hand and write however the value of s c and n comes in so only once you finish up doing with two or three values you'll be understand you will understand the concept of that program so over here c is value is equal to one so because the sum of the first number has first 10 even numbers they asked you okay so first number will give us if we give zero any number add to zero plus zero zero plus zero it will go so we equal to c is equal to one then s equal to sum s is equal to means the variable which stores the sum will be taken as s n is equal to two so we have it for even numbers right increment should go with even numbers first 10 even numbers so e2 plus 4 like it should go then start as a label name so every time whether it go, go to start instead of giving line number we are given the label number s is equal to s plus n so 0 plus what is the value of n 2 0 plus 2 so 2 is saved in sum c equal to c plus 1 so we are incrementing the value of c c earlier value is 1 1 plus 1 2 so now c has got the value 2 s has got the value 2 n is equal to n plus 2 n is 2 plus 2 4 it's checking whether c is less than 10 yes condition is 2 right c is equal to 2 so c is less than equal to 10 go to start again it comes over here it says s is equal to present value of s was 2, 2 plus again 2, 4, 4, 4 by 4 values, so c is equal to c plus 1, what is the earlier value of 2, 2 plus 1, 2, 3, like that till the value comes equal to 10, this looping will continue, keep loading and once it is, this is comes, values come 11, then the print sum, whatever being stored in the sum will be printed as such, yeah. So next one program is there for you to enter any number and find whether negative or positive. Okay, you might be wondering like where to, I'll just explain the logic first. CLS clearing the screen. Then you're entering the number. If it's greater than zero, it's understood as positive number. Else it's understood as a negative number. And if, if statement has been brought to end with end if and the program ends with end. Yes, so my number was 45 and positive. Now on how to run this program. We have a compiler over here. This you, I hope you it's visible for you this particular compiler or like this compiler any one compiler but I generally go with this is online compiler where you can write the program over here and if you run the output will be displayed so you can see 5 print 5 the values get play whatever program you have just write the program over here and click run yes so with this we have come to the end of this December portion so have a nice day students